All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us this evening. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who have listened to the words of the Qur'an. For indeed, not only is it a reward for reading every letter, but even for listening to every single letter. And this is why it is important that the recitation is as clear as possible. So that we listen to every letter from where it is pronounced. So that we receive a reward for having listened to each letter. Amin. Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners, we have a major problem. And that major problem is fighting the devil. We all know that shaitan was also a creature and is also a creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, created by the creator himself. And we all do know that it is part of Allah's divine plan to have made us from amongst those who have to face and fight shaitan on a daily basis. And for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the history from the very beginning where it started and what happened. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us in detail because He does not want us to be caught from amongst those whom shaitan entraps. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Shaitan or the devil or Iblis who is the head of all of them has an entire army. All of them are from the jinn kind and all of them meaning the root of them is from the jinn kind. We will come to verses in the Quran that prove to us that they are also devils from mankind. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all. But the root of the devils, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the reason why he became known as shaitan was because he refused to prostrate to Adam alayhi salatu was salam. He committed a sin, he was arrogant and he thought he was better. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of this history in the Quran in more than six places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ أَبَى وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ Remember when we told the angels to prostrate to Adam, they all prostrated besides Iblis. And Iblis, he refused and he was haughty and arrogant. He was proud, he thought he was better and he was from amongst those who disbelieved as a result and not only disbelieved but even from the from amongst those who were ungrateful we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never to make us from those who are ungrateful the first lesson we learn from this is pride is one of the crimes of the devil himself arrogance and haughtiness is a crime of the devil himself it's a major major sin we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that sin and we also learn that that will result in not acknowledging the level or the status given to, given to others by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah has favored someone with wealth, when Allah has favored them with children, when Allah has favored them with knowledge, when Allah has favored them with any form of goodness, we should acknowledge the fact that Allah has favored them above us, if that is the case. And we should not deny the gifts of Allah. Because if we deny the gifts of Allah, that is only the first step. Thereafter, our heart begins to dislike the individual because we become jealous. And thereafter, that jealousy develops into a hatred. And that hatred develops into an enmity. And that enmity then results in us working actively against that individual, losing focus on our own path and shifting to somebody else's path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So the root of the crime is actually the pride or the ingratitude or the fact that a person denies the gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all from his gifts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in every single way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after mentioning the detail and the history of Iblis and how he refused to prostrate and what he said. You know when he was asked to prostrate, he actually said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records this in the Qur'an, أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طِينٍ I am better than him. You have created me from fire and you have created him from dust or from soil. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned him again, spoke to him directly. But that arrogance is such that even if all the clear-cut signs come to an individual, he won't want to listen to what is right. He will always transgress the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is warning us thereafter. Saying that shaitan asked for some time. He asked for respite. رَبِّ أَنظِرْنِي إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Oh Allah, give me some time up to the day of resurrection. Then I will show you something. I will show you that these creatures that you are telling me to prostrate to, they will not worship you, they will worship me. Or they will worship one another. They will listen to me, they will obey my instruction. You watch, you wait, you see. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then declared to Adam alayhi salam that look, this individual is your, en your enemy. He has great enmity against you. He hates you. He dislikes you. Really be careful, be watchful. Make sure that he does not lead you astray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them directly and clearly. But still it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan was that this shaitan, this iblis, the devil had actually come to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and convinced him to engage in that one act which was prohibited for him. What was that? The eating of a certain fruit. Allah says, do not do this. Now one might ask that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to be worshipped, why did he create things that he said abstain from? That's a question. He should have rather just not made those things. You have pork, for example. Allah tells us, do not consume pork, do not consume alcohol. Why did he make it in the first place? That's a question. And it's not a bad question, it's a good question. But the answer of it is obviously not with everybody. Only some will be able to explain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to be worshipped. That's the reason he created myself and yourselves and all creatures. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have created mankind and jinn kind solely for one purpose, to worship me. The worship of Allah is divided into two. To engage in the commands or to fulfill the commands and to abstain from prohibitions. A person's spirituality is developed in a different way when they engage in good deeds. They become, mashallah, pious and they have spirituality and so on. But there is a different aspect of an individual's spirituality that is enhanced when they abstain from prohibitions. So that's why in order to have the complete spiritual upliftment of an individual, he needs to engage in two things. One is to do that which is commanded and the other is to abstain from that which is prohibited. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a balance. So he has made... He has issued commands to test us, will we do them? Then he has issued prohibitions to test us, will we abstain for his sake? Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. That is the complete system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for that reason, he has alcohol, he has gambling, he has, for example, created the pig and what have you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. May he make us from those who can abstain. So Adam alayhi salam was in heaven and he was told that you can do whatever you'd like here. وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةَ فَتَكُونَا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do not approach this tree, lest you will be from amongst those who have oppressed or those who are the losers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ From amongst those who have oppressed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter tells us all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us all. إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًّا إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوا حِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fatir that indeed shaytan is your enemy. So consider him an enemy. Consider him an enemy. Do not just say, okay, he's an enemy, an enemy. That's not enough. Regard him as an enemy. When you have an enemy, you are careful, you are watchful, you prepare, you protect yourself, you make sure. Today when we have enemies or little thieves who come to our houses, mashallah, we have alarms. 
We have backup systems. We have big companies that, that will react instantly when someone wants to even cross our road a few too many times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. What about shaitan? Crossing our life, crossing our path on a daily basis. Not only that, we invite him to our house. May Allah protect us all. And we ask him to join us for supper. May Allah grant us all protection. It is happening, really. The way we talk, the way we speak, sometimes we are entrapped by the devil and we don't realize. And that's why sometimes we don't have happiness in our lives. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us that look, shaitan promised something. Shaitan told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf, I will come to them and I will lead them astray. I will wait in ambush for them from in front of them, from behind them from the right side of them, from the left side of them. And you will notice that these creatures whom you asked me to prostrate to, they will not be thankful to you. They will be ungrateful and they will rather follow me and they will rather not follow you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So in Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of another promise of shaitan. Shaitan says, I will definitely lead them astray. I'm going to show you. He's promising the Creator. I'm going to lead them astray. And I will arouse their desires to do bad. I will arouse their desires. When something is prohibited for them, I'll show you how I'll beautify it for them. And when something is allowed or something is a command for them, I'll show you how I make them lazy for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And I shall instruct them. The devil says, you watch, the instruction won't be yours, it will be mine. You watch and see, I will show them and I will command them to slip the ears of the cattle, meaning to be cruel to the animals also, as well as to change the creation of yours, Ya Allah. What that means is, they won't be happy with what you've given them. They won't want it. You know, this is why in Islam, there are certain things prohibited. A man has a face. Be happy with that face. A female has a face. Be happy with what Allah has granted you, where your nose is, your eyes and so on. If you are not happy with what Allah has given you, Wallahi, that's a disaster. That is ungratefulness, ingratitude. Why do you compete with the others? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So then a person has plastic surgery and what have you, all that will result in regret. Obviously, if someone's face is completely deformed after having been involved in an accident, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. There is a chance and a possibility that that particular individual may be going through some form of surgery in order to rectify what was wrong. But it is not allowed to go out and beautify yourself through various types of surgery and what have you. And this is why the hair that Allah has given us, we must be happy with it. It is prohibited for men and women to add extensions to their hair, which does not belong to them. These extensions that are sewn onto the hair is Equivalent to telling the Creator, I'm not happy with what you gave me. I'll show you I can come up with something better. Allahu Akbar. What a dangerous statement. We want to add to what Allah has given us. Allah gave us hair. So what if it's very little? So what if you are bald? What's wrong? I think it's actually quite good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. It's not a bad thing. Remember, one man's meat is another man's poison. Maybe that's not the correct saying here. But what is, what is meant is that what someone doesn't like, someone else will like. If you are big in size, don't worry. Remember the story of the king? Don't get too worried. Allahu Akbar. It is a duty of us that we realize some people will admire you as you are. Allah has created people to like you with a dark complexion or with a light complexion. It's got nothing to do with what Allah has given you to say, I'm not happy with it. Alhamdulillah, be thankful. Because shaitan's plan, one of his plans, and we need to know his plan, is to make us ungrateful for what we've been given by the creator himself. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection. Then Allah says, so don't follow the paths of shaitan. Shaitan has many paths. Allah has one path. As-siratul mustaqim. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has one path. And shaitan has many paths. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nur. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tattabi'u khutuwati shaitan. O you who believe, do not follow the paths of shaitan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the same thing in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُّبِينٌ Don't follow the paths of shaitan or the footsteps of shaitan rather. Because indeed, he is an outright clear open enemy of yours. We have told you what he did. Now you'd better take heed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nur, وَمَن يَتَّبِعْ خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Whoever follows the paths or the footsteps of shaitan, there is a sign to actually pick them up. They are those who promote immorality, who promote indecency, who promote evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must definitely make us from those who can recognize the evil and who can stay away from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who follow the footsteps of shaitan, they are the ones who promote immorality, promiscuity and evil. They promote adultery, they promote all sorts of sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection. In fact, in another verse in Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ If you fulfill your salah correctly, automatically it will keep you away from immorality and evil. The same thing that shaitan instructs and commands. So if we would like to come out of the clutches of shaitan, we need to fulfill our salah. We need to engage in our prayer. The five daily prayers, plug in with your own creator and you will see how close you become to him. It will make you conscious of yourself and your deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about how shaitan promises. He promises the people and he makes them look forward to evil. يَعِدُهُمْ وَيُمَنِّيهِمْ وَمَا يَعِدُهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا He gives them all sorts of promises and he beautifies all the evil lusts and desires of the individual promising them, don't worry, Allah is forgiving, Allah will forgive you, relax, don't even worry, go and commit the sin. No, 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 it's very beautiful, it's looking in front of you, it's in front of your eyes, no one's going to know about it. All that is shaitan's plan. Once you commit the sin, what shaitan does, he runs away, he quickly goes away. Because now you are in the shackles of his, you've already gone forward. Now you're worried, who's seen me? What happened? You look behind you, you don't have any peace. When you're sleeping, your phone rings, you quickly run to it. You want this because of the sin you committed. May Allah protect us all. So a person actually gets caught in the tangle and gets caught in the shackles of shaitan because of the sins that shaitan promotes, then he runs away. And we will come to that later on in tonight's topic. How shaitan runs away. He is a very, very big deceiver. And do you know what he says? He actually comes out and swears an oath to say, I am genuine. Really, I've got a solid feeling for you. And sometimes this devil comes in the form of your best friend. May Allah protect us. Sometimes the devil comes using the mouth of really someone who's very close to you. Shaitan is very sharp. He's very intelligent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that he sees you from a place where you don't see him. Amazing. Listen to the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-A'raf that shaitan sees you from a place you do not see him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا الشَّيَاطِينَ أَوْلِيَاءَ لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says, Him and His whole army, they watch you from a place that you cannot see them. So they come to you in disguise. They were kicked out of heaven. They still happened to transgress by infiltrating in one way or another and getting to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and conning him. May Allah protect us. Allahu Akbar. Something very important that we need to know. If a person has fallen prey to shaitan, 
the thing he needs to do very quickly is to admit his sin and to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To admit that shaitan has got hold of me. Ya Allah, take me out of the clutches of shaitan. But not only the dua, we need to make a firm intention and we need to walk in the right direction. Leave the path, the paths of shaitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all. So shaitan promises people and he swears to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ فَدَلَّاهُمَا بِغُرُورٍ He swore and he really took these people telling them, Adam and Hawa alayhim as that do you know what? I promise you, I am genuine. This tree that Allah told you not to eat from, He only told you not to eat from it because if you eat it, you live forever. Allahu Akbar. If you eat it, you live forever. And if you eat from it, you will have kingdom and wealth that will never diminish. It will never ever be extinguished. It will never finish. So naturally, if someone told you, look, come here, I'll show you how to live longer. People will go and listen. Subhanallah. If they tell you, drink this, and you, really it will improve your health because it will give you so many more years. The first part of their statement might be correct. You have green tea, for example, it might be more healthy than the normal milk tea. That seems to be said. But it's not going to increase your life, not at all. It might enhance the quality of your life by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it will never give you one minute more. So if anyone thinks that it's going to prolong their lives, they are wrong. It's Allah who's decided your life is going to end there. And this is why to go to the devils is absolutely unacceptable. One of the items which shaitan encourages and promotes and teaches is black magic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that in Surah Al-Baqarah. He says, وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانُ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرِ Sulaiman alayhi salam did not teach people magic. He was not a disbeliever. But shaitan was a disbeliever. He is the one who taught everybody magic. And who taught them black magic. And who taught them all sorts of dirt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. This is why... Whoever engages in black magic has lost their iman with immediate effect. May Allah protect us all. Not only that, whoever goes to a magician, they've also lost their iman. And whoever goes to a fortune teller, whether you call him a sangoma, or whether you call him a nganga, or whether you call him a witch doctor, or whether you call him a, a spirit medium or what have you, if anyone goes to a fortune teller who is going to tell them something of the future or who is going to help them in their taqdeer and predestiny supposedly, they have lost their iman immediately. Listen to the narration. مَنْ أَتَى عَرَّافًا أَوْ كَاهِنًا فَصَدَّقَهُ بِمَا أَخْبَرْ فَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Whoever goes to a fortune teller or a witch doctor, and believes what they have to say. They have disbelieved in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the whole mission of Islam. Allahu Akbar. So therefore, it is our duty. If anyone has been to any of these people, repent. Repeat your shahada. You need to read your shahada and enter, re-enter into the fold of Islam. It is a serious matter. Be happy with what Allah has given you and never ever go out hunting for shaitan. This is why I said sometimes what we do, we go and invite shaitan to our homes. May Allah protect us all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about how dangerous he is, how deceiving he is. And Allah warns all of us in Surah Luqman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا Don't let this worldly life deceive you, O oh man. It's a short life. وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورُ And the big deceiver, the big cheater, don't let him cheat you. The big thief, don't let him steal from you. Who is the big deceiver? Shaitan. Allah says, don't let the one who is the professional of all deceivers deceive you. And this is why deception is also one of the qualities. One of the qualities of shaitan. The hadith says, Man ghashana falaysa minna. Whoever deceives us is not from amongst us. They have exited the fold. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from deception. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then warns us after he tells us what happened to Adam and Hawa in Jannah. May peace be upon them. Allah says in Surah Al-A'raf, Ya Bani Adam la yaftinannakum shaytan O children of Adam, don't let shaytan come and test you 
and don't let him do what he did to your forefathers to you. كما أخرج أبويكم من الجنة. Don't let him do what he did to your forefathers, removing them from the goodness they were in. He removed them from paradise, from heaven. With us, the goodness we are in, we will be removed from it if we follow the footsteps of Shaytan. Really, a person has a happy life. He's happily married. The minute he starts committing adultery, he is following the footsteps of Shaytan. He's now tied down by Shaytan. He will lose possibly his children, possibly a good spouse, a good wife, or if it is a female, a good husband who was sinless, who was dedicated to him or her. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Why? Because they fell into the trap of Shaytan and not realizing the only way to come back to happiness and contentment is to leave here and now the sin that we are involved in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all abstention from sin. May He grant us the ability to turn to Him as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Look at what He did to Adam and Hawa alayhim as salam. He displayed their shame. Allahu Akbar. He made them shameful of what they did. And this is why one of the primary issues when it comes to shaitan and the devil is that when you follow his path, when you sin, the first thing that happens, you become shameless. You know when Adam salam and Hawa salam, when they sinned in Jannah, the first thing that happened, their private parts appeared, though they were covered before that. They appeared and it resulted in them drawing from the leaves of Jannah in order to cover their private parts. They felt the shame. And they did not have to do that in the past. And the Mufassireen have made mention, some of them have spoken about how when a person commits a sin, the first thing it does, it makes them shameless. And it makes them from amongst those who promote, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, immorality, unless they turn and repent. And look at what Adam alayhi salam said. Immediately, immediately after committing the sin, he realized he was wrong. And he says, Rabbana... ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين O oh, our Rabb, we have oppressed ourselves, really. And if you are not going to forgive us, you are not going to have mercy on us, then indeed we will be from amongst the losers. So Ya Allah, forgive us. And Allah says we forgave him straight away. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who take shaitan as their protector and those who befriend shaitan and those who allow themselves to have a link with the devil. Obviously that devil would come to us either in the form of a whisper from the devil or in the form of a human being. Whenever there is a person with bad qualities, remember you should not befriend them. Stay far away from them no matter what. Because shaitan will come to you through them. And this is how we get entrapped by shaitan. He uses evil people to come to us and to befriend us and to be in our circle so that we become evil with them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about uh, and this issue in Surah Al-A'raf. Allah says, فَرِيقًا هَدَى وَفَرِيقًا حَقَّ عَلَيْهِمُ الضَّلَالَةِ There are two groups. Groups, a group that Allah has guided and a group that is deserving of misguidance. Why would a group be deserving of misguidance? Allah says, they have indeed taken the devil as protectors besides Allah and they feel that they are rightly guided yet they are astray. How can we take the devil as a protector besides Allah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the devil. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter tells us that there are people who think they are guided yet they are in misguidance because that's what shaitan does. Shaitan misguides us to the degree that we think we are doing a good job, but we are not. One of, the, one of the negative effects of shaitan is that a person who is in the clutches of the devil will always think they are doing right. Yet, they will be doing wrong and they will be engaged in evil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how shaitan beautifies the evil. And in many places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ Shaytan has beautified for them. Shaytan has made fair seeming for them their evil deeds. Shaytan has made fair seeming for them their evil deeds, which means he beautified the evil deeds. So a person comes and he'll argue with you, telling you, no, this is right. This is definitely right. There's nothing wrong with this. Come on, what am I doing? It's not wrong. How can it be wrong? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, I am calling you towards goodness. The devil is calling you towards evil. If there is any rule that I have laid, Allah tells us, then you should know that it is a rule to enhance yourself in every single way. Success lies in following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Success will not come to us just by us sitting down and making a prayer for success. We need to make an effort as well. A huge effort is required to adopt the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as abstain from prohibitions. This brings us to the next point. What shaitan does when he wants to entrap the Muslims, he makes them, and I think a lot of us are guilty of this, Shaitan makes us feel that we only have to fulfill the commands. And he makes us forget about abstaining from prohibitions. So you find a man, mashallah, with a long beard, with a huge turban, reading salah in the first saf or in the second saf, always there, mashallah, promoting good, telling everyone to read salah, going to everybody's home, inviting them towards Islam. But when it comes to backbiting, he, he's not worried. It's like not even a sin. He says, look, I'm reading my salah. I'm giving my zakah. I've been for hajj. I fast in the month of Ramadan. I've said my shahada. Now what am I worried about? That man is in the clutches of shaitan. May Allah protect us. And it would be me or you if we do the same. Remember, in the same way that there are commands, there are prohibitions. What shaitan does, he'll then tell you, no, I am already dressed properly, so I'm a better Muslim. Allahu Akbar. There are some people who might not be dressed like you. But they might be even better Muslims. They might have a deed that Allah loves more than any of the deeds that I have done or you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. This is why when a person belittles the sin of backbiting, of deceiving, of cheating, of slander, of lying, of causing disunity and so on. These are major, major sins. When people belittle them and don't, re don't regard them as big sins and people continue engaging in them, then it is time for them to understand and realize that they are in the clutches of the devil. If they do not turn as soon as possible, Wallahi, it will result in their destruction and regret in the hereafter. And this is why in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in, in a different wording, Allah says, it is ten times more difficult to protect a good deed after it is done. It is ten times more difficult. To read salah is the easiest thing you could do. I can read salah now. We can, we've just stood, mashallah, for so long for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether or not that salah is going to remain with me up to the day of judgment is a different issue altogether. Because as soon as I go out of here, if I backbite someone, there is a chance that my salah will now go to them because I need to pay for that. It's a fine. And if I have deceived someone, my zakah goes to them. If I have slandered someone, accused them of adultery, which is one of the biggest crimes, my hajj goes to them. When I come on the day of Qiyamah, there will be nothing left. So we belittle this issue. That's why the, the Quran says, "Man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha." Allah says, "Whoever comes on the day of Qiyamah with a good deed, we will multiply it for them by ten. But whoever does a good deed, is it immediately multiplied? No, it's not immediately multiplied. According to the tafsir of this verse, which is also mentioned in a book known as Ma'arif al-Quran." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that to do your deed is easy. But if you come with it on the day of Qiyamah intact, still in the jewelry box, then we will multiply it by 10 because you deserve the multiplication. You have protected it. You did your deed and you carried on doing good and you did not worry about others. You didn't give away your deed. And this is why one hadith says, Atadruna manil muflis. Do you know who is the bankrupt person? In a nutshell, the hadith tells us a bankrupt person is the one who comes with a lot of salah, a lot of zakah, a lot of good deeds on the day of Qiyamah, but they have backbitten this one, sworn that one, slandered that one, accused this one. So the salah goes there, the good deeds go there, they owe that one, they owe this one. They are left with no good deeds and they still have a line of people waiting, saying, but they've also cheated us and lied about us and so on. 
and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the evil deeds of those people are then taken and put onto that person and then this person is cast into hellfire yet when they came into into that particular day of Qiyamah, they had lots of good deeds. These are the people who did not protect their good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever make us entrapped by shaitan. This is why a question every single one of us needs to ask ourselves every day. How did shaitan come to me today? Because anyone who thinks shaitan did not come to them within a period of 24 hours is a fool. Allahu Akbar. Shaitan has tried his luck with me and you every day, every time of the day he is trying his luck. He promises Allah solid promises. We read some of them tonight. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he is telling me and he is telling you that I'm going to lead them astray. I promise you, I swear an oath that I will lead them astray. And he brings forth yet another issue. What else does shaitan do? And let's look at some of the things he does. وَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُ مَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ Shaitan, one of his biggest jobs that he loves doing is to separate husband and wife. Allahu Akbar. So a small thing happens and husband gets irritated. A small thing happens and wife gets irritated. That is shaitan's plan. The next time you feel the irritation, before you scratch where it's itching, ask yourself, who is making me itch here or scratch here? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Sometimes... A little bit of silence will help. Sometimes a smile when things are tense will actually ease a lot of things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us within our homes with a lot of happiness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the devil. He must never be allowed to enter the house. Another thing shaitan does, he makes us angry. Anger is from shaitan as well. Because when a man is angry, he says things, he does things without thinking. The devil is thinking on his behalf. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. That is why when one youngster came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and asked him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, give me advice. He says, don't get angry. He says, okay, give me more advice. He says, don't get angry. He says, okay, give me more advice. He said, don't get angry. Allahu Akbar. He kept on repeating it. Because anger is the root of a lot of regret in life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So many people have issued talaqs to their wives in anger. And then they come and they say, but I didn't know what I was doing. Well, why did you utter those words? They are sacred words, dangerous words. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever make us from amongst those who cannot control our temper and anger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us that another act of shaitan, what he makes us do, whenever there is some important information, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there are some people who don't know who to tell that news to. They go and tell it to everyone. If it's a piece of good news, you don't need to tell everyone. Some people might become jealous of you. And if it is a piece of bad news, you don't need to tell everyone. Some people might become happy that you were inflicted with bad. And sometimes if it is to do with security or if it is to do with goodness or evil regarding the entire community, you need to know where that news needs to go. Because as Muslims, let me inform you, if you have a dispute with someone, the correct Muslim Islamic approach is to resolve the matter. Not to go out to the rest of the globe and spread the issue. But you need to sit together, resolve the matter, come out with a smile, our problem is solved. Allahu Akbar. When you see someone engaged in something wrong or evil, shaitan will make you want to go out and broadcast that evil. Because that's man, that's the nature of man. Man wants to come out and prove that everyone else is bad and I am right. I am the one who's good. Allahu Akbar. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, that's not the way of doing things. If it is a believer, you've seen them sinning. The truth of the matter is you meant to go to them and try and solve the matter. Look, brother, look, sister, this is not good. I won't tell anyone, but this is something that you are in the clutches of shaitan. Talk to them, address them. That, that is the right way of doing things. Because now you want to resolve the matter. You don't want to promote the matter. But the honest truth is modernization has taught us to promote everything. Anything bad or good, just tell the whole world before you even resolve it. So now tomorrow, even if that problem is solved, rumor will still be spread and we will be the source. And remember, whenever, whenever someone spreads rumor of someone else, they will taste the punishment of that before they die. They will taste it before they die. So that is why it is very important that we don't fall into the clutches of shaitan by spreading rumor about others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِّنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوا بِهِ وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ 
ولولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته لاتبعتم الشيطان إلا قليلا If it was not for the mercy of Allah and for his virtue, you would have all been following the devil besides just a few. But it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gives us all chances to go back to the Creator. Allah says, whenever good news or whenever news of security or news of news of instability comes to certain individuals who are hypocrites, they tend to inform everyone. Allah says, no, inform only those who will deal with it positively. Who will understand how to treat that news and information? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the handiwork of the devil. And Allah says, alcohol, gambling, and all forms of evil, these are the handiwork of shaitan. You need to abstain from it because what shaitan's intention is, is as follows. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in Surah Al Ma'idah. إنما يريد الشيطان أن يوقع بينكم العداوة والبغضاء في الخمر والميسر ويصدكم عن ذكر الله وعن الصلاة he wants to create enmity between us through gambling and through alcohol and he wants us to forget and to turn away from salah and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person who's a drunkard, how close is he to the creator? He loses his mind at a certain stage. May Allah protect us. A person who gambles does not have that iman in his heart to believe that sustenance is from Allah. He wants to start taking chances. He puts his money, they put their money, everybody puts their money and he does something that's not in his hands. He wants to earn through that chance of lottery or through the chance of a casino. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The chances are only one. <laughs> that is being entrapped by shaitan. A person who walks in the direction of a casino is already in the wrong path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us and protect us and our entire communities. Subhanallah. Nowadays, we've heard people telling us, you know what? There is a little musalla in the casino. Allahu Akbar. For what? For the Muslims. Because those are the patrons. If that is the case, how dare? On one hand, we want to read salah. The other hand, we want to do the exact opposite of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever overtake us with his punishment because sometimes I think we overstep the limits a little bit too much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us about how the, the eating of haram renders a person totally brainless. When a person eats haram, their brain ceases to function. And this is a very important verse. Once you put something haram in your mouth, your tongue is already cursing you, telling you, look, take it out. But we can't hear the tongue talk. The tongue is saying, why do you want to use me to devour something that's totally prohibited? Why do you want me to be cursed? Then the throat curses us. Then the, the esophagus curses us. The little colon curses us. The big colon curses us. The stomach curses us. The liver, the spleen, the, the, or everything, the kidneys begin to curse us. Why did you put haram? Why did you put haram in this? So much so that as some of it is coming out, even that section of the body curses us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. That's how dangerous it is to put haram. Now the problem is beyond that. What about the blood and the meat and the flesh that was made through that haram? It is a curse in our bodies forever. So look what Allah says. And this verse is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Look at the word shaitan coming into the picture. A person who devours interest and usury. That interest, obviously we know interest is haram, usury is haram. A person who eats interest, Allah says, they will not be able to behave in any other way than one who is possessed by the devil. Allahu Akbar. They will not be able to behave in any other way than the one who is possessed by the devil because they won't be able to distinguish between right and wrong. They will not see the light. You tell them the Quran says this, they'll tell you, no, I looked at it myself. It doesn't say that. I understood differently. Wallahi, their understanding is from haram. Their brains are made with haram brain cells. May Allah protect us. Because that wealth that went in was from the devil. 
This is how serious shaitan is. He's planning his long term because once it's in the system, to get it out takes a very, very long time. This is why the narration says when a person drinks alcohol for 40 days, the salah is not accepted. So now you have a youngster who comes to us and says, you know what? I don't come to the masjid. I've got another 30 days to go. You say, but why? So he tells you because, sorry man, imam, you know what? I drank, you know. What nonsense is that? Whether you drink or not, you still have to come to read your salah, but the reward of it for 40 days, you won't get. Let me quickly explain that to you. When a person drinks alcohol, they still have to read their salah. But Allah says the salah is not accepted for 40 days, meaning if they don't read their salah, they will be punished. But when we all read our salah, we will achieve a reward. A person who's drunk alcohol for 40 days, if they read their salah, they will not be punished, but they will neither be rewarded for it. It's like a compensation. But if they don't read their salah, on top of being rejected, they will also be punished. So that is a clarification we need to understand. Not that some people, they look at the Quran and they say, no, I seen, you know, the hadith says that for 40 days, so I've, I've been given that grace period. May Allah protect us. That type of thinking shows what Allah says. They are behaving like someone who is possessed. They have no understanding whatsoever, no deep understanding. And this is the effect of haram income. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that about the eating of interest. Then Allah says, forgetfulness when it comes to doing good things is from the devil. And forgetfulness when it comes to abstaining from bad is from the devil. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am. That when people are sitting and they are saying bad things, and if you are sitting there, you must never ever keep on sitting once they begin to utter bad. Especially the women folk, well the, the address is for men folk as well. When you visit someone and they begin to gossip, you know, nowadays the men gossip more professionally than the females. I wonder whether it's boredom or what it is. So when you are sitting with someone, they begin to gossip. It is your religious duty to stand up and say, listen, my dear brother, listen, my dear sister, you have begun to gossip. Salaamu Alaikum, I'm going away. Allah will have mercy on you. How many of us are ready to do that? Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us the power, the ability. Now Allah says, if you keep on sitting with them, then that is from the devil. And if you have forgotten, then you must know that the devil made you forget. So then suddenly you remember, you get up and you must walk out. If the devil makes you forget, then as soon as you remember, don't sit with the oppressors. Immediately get up and walk away. Those who are oppressors, those who are doing wrong, we are not supposed to be in their company. Because that itself is from the devil. The devil makes us forget. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then also speaks about another very interesting point. In Surah Al-Kahf, we read the verses tonight, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the story of Musa alayhi salam when he went out in search for Al-Khidr. And the, the fish suddenly disappeared. When the fish disappeared, so the young man was asked, Hey, where's our lunch? Where's the lunch? We're feeling hungry. Come. He says, Hey, I don't know. I, it's gone somewhere. I've forgotten about it. And then he makes a statement which was recorded for us up to the day of judgment. It was the devil that made me forget to remember it. Allahu Akbar. The devil makes you forget certain things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in a few places in the Quran. Like Surah Yusuf. There was a good deed that was to be done by the prisoner who left. He was told that when you go to the king, just mention my name there. Tell him there's an innocent man sitting in the jail. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, Shaytan made him forget Yusuf, meaning Shaytan made him forget Yusuf alayhi salam and forget to remember Yusuf alayhi salam. And for the, as a result of that, Yusuf alayhi salam remained in the jail for a few more years. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about company and the fact, and I've mentioned this a few times today. This is a solid point, a very, very powerful point. Do you know that if you have bad qualities, most probably you got it from your peers, those you mixed with. Sometimes they might even be your family members, sometimes even your parents. So if you have a bad quality, you probably got it from somewhere, but you didn't get it from Allah, you got it from the devil. 
that devil came to you in the form of possibly, most probably, your friends and your peers. So sometimes the upbringing in the home is very, very good. But the school you send your child to, they learn an accent from that school which is totally unacceptable. They begin to speak slang. They begin to sway. They begin to cheat and steal. All that is from the school. We need to be careful which schools we send our children to. We need to be careful what type of friends our children mix with. And bigger than that, more important than that, how, what type of people we mix with ourselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan, regarding the one who did not have good company. لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا Definitely on the day of Qiyamah, they will regret and say, Ya Allah, this person whom I was associated with, my friend, my bosom buddy, they made me forget you, Ya Allah. And definitely shaitan was very deceiving to me, Ya Allah. Now let me inform you, when a person is smoking, nine times out of ten, they've learned it from people they mixed with. When a person is on drugs, nine times out of ten, it is from people they associated with. When a person is an adulterer, nine times out of ten, they've learned it from the company they have. When a person does not come for salah, nine times out of ten, it is because that is the trend around the people they mix with. When a person is an alcoholic, nine times out of ten, it is because those who are whom the, he or she is with is also like that. When a person has a bad mouth, it's also the same. And that is why rehabilitation is a waste of time if you yourself do not want to help yourself. Because I promise you, a person who's on drugs, a person who's an alcoholic, a person who has any bad habit, it is up to you to change. The whole world can want to rehabilitate you forever and ever. But if that quality is still in your heart, it is a waste of time and money for everybody to, to be worried about you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And this is why Allah says, if you want to save yourself, the first thing you need to do, Change your company totally, totally, every one of them, change them. If you are a bad person on drugs, cut out your whole friendship. And parents of those who are on drugs, let me inform you, extremely important, you might want to change the suburb and the city you are living in, in order to protect your son or your daughter. You might want to go into a remote town so that your children can abstain from those they mixed with. It will do you a ton of good, even though your income might have decreased, you, you will save your children. That's the importance of the locality you live in, the importance of it, and how serious it is. Your suburb, the area you live in, be careful, make sure you choose it properly. You rather live in a slum where the people around you all go to the masjid than to live in a palace where nobody talks about the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from evil company. That is one of the biggest plans of shaitan, is he comes to you through your company, your company, your company, and this is why we are taught when you want to know someone, don't look at them. Just look at the people they mix with and close the file. That's it. We say this normally regarding marriage. You want to know a boy, you want to know a girl. More important than asking them about themselves. Look at those they mix with. That's it. Close the file thereafter. If they are drunkards, they can turn green in their faces telling you I've never drunk. They are lying. What are they doing with those? I've given an example and I want to repeat this example. When you see fish in the ocean, you will notice the whale moves with all other whales. You will notice the little bream move with other breams. The snook moves with snook. The hake moves with hake and so on. I'm using names of uh, fish we eat actually. Subhanallah. But you will never find one small fish, one big fish, one other fish, one hook, meaning one snook and one hake and so on. You won't find that. <laughs> the reason is that is foolish. They have to have something in common to be moving together. The same applies to human beings. Someone who's pious and someone who's a drunkard, they can't move together. Really. It's like a sardine moving with a whale. Allahu Akbar. It can't happen. One will devour the other. Allahu Akbar. So this is why let them not fool you when they tell you, look, I'm not on drugs, but the 10 guys who I mix with, they're all on drugs. Tell him you are the boss. You are the main one. Don't lie. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our offspring. Remember those who are tested with drugs, it is up to you really to change yourself, no one else. You need to develop the willpower and you need to make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our offspring from drugs. And may He protect our offspring from all these bad habits. Wallahi, there are good people who lose their children just because of their company. 
Allahu Akbar. There is so much we could utter about this because that is the root of shaitan's plan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us conscious of shaitan's plan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that shaitan, there are some people who worship shaitan. They are satanists and the Quran speaks about them. They worship the devil in every single way. And the father of Ibrahim alayhi salam was one of them. Azar. He used to make idols and sell them. He used to promote the evil of the highest form, which is shirk. So the little child in Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ibrahim alayhi salam went to his father and says, Ya abati la ta'bud shaytan. Oh my father, do not worship the devil. Do not worship shaytan. Oh my father, don't worship shaytan. Who is telling who? The child, correcting the father. We spoke about it a few days back. Inna shaytan kana lirrahmani asiyya. Definitely, Ibrahim alayhi salam is telling his own father. Oh my father, shaytan was definitely a sinner and he definitely transgressed against the most merciful. Imagine, for the most merciful to kick someone out of his mercy, it is not something minor. If Allah who is the most merciful decided that shaitan and iblis is kicked out of his mercy, he has to have committed a huge sin and a huge crime. May Allah never ever kick us out of his mercy. How would we be kicked out of Allah's mercy? By worshipping shaitan. By following shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. Listen to what Ibrahim alayhi salam continues to say. Ya abati inni akhafu Oh my father, I am fearing that punishment from the most merciful might overtake you and you will become a protector and a friend of, of the devil himself. So those who promote the devil, it is a form of punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who don't realize the plan of shaitan, it's a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us every form of goodness. That is why in the Quran Allah says, make a dua that Allah protect you from shaitan. وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ هَمَزَاتِ الشَّيَاطِينَ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, O oh my Rabb, protect me from the whispers of the devil. Imagine. If the Prophet ﷺ had to make that dua, what about us? We need to make it more on a regular basis. One whole surah is revealed, protection from the devil. Both types of devils. Those from man, those from jinn. We know surah An-Nas at the end. Go and read it, go and check its meaning. We are asking protection from the devil, from the whispers of the devil. That whisper in the hearts of mankind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stressing the point of man. And how evil man can become. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. This is why Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ عَدُوًّا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِّ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ زُخْرُفَ الْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا Allah says, this is how for every prophet we have kept enemies and shayateen and devils from mankind and then from jinkind. Why is mankind mentioned before jinkind in the Quran? When it comes to the devils, some of the mufassirin say because the, the, the devils from man are far more dangerous. Because they come to you in the form of a human with a smile on their faces and yet they are promoting vice and they are convincing you, they talk to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So Allah says, they beautify the speech out of deception in order to come and lure people to do the evil that they are engaged in. That is why when we are reading Quran, it is important we say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells this to us in Surah An-Nahl. فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ So when you, want, when you would like to read the Qur'an, the word of Allah, before you start, seek protection. In Allah from shaitan, the condemned. Because you don't want to read the Qur'an and then have a warped understanding of the Qur'an. Some people will read a verse in order to look for a loophole. And believe me, if the mind is warped, they will be misunderstanding the Qur'an in totality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about water. 
and the fact that water, fresh water has the quality to protect us from the devil. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us regarding one of the battles that took place. It rained. And when it rained, this is what Allah says in Surah Al-Anfal. وَيُنَزِّلُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً لِيُطَهِّرَكُمْ بِهِ وَيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ رِجَزَ الشَّيْطَانِ Allah sent down rain in order to purify you and to take away the dirt of shaitan from you. Some of the Mufassireen have gone as far as saying, Wudu does the same thing for you. If you keep yourself in the condition of wudu as much as you can, inshallah, you will be protected from the devil. This is why in the morning, the devil comes and massage you. Don't get up for fajr. When you succeed to fight the devil in the cold, and you get up, the minute you turn the tap on, when the water comes into your hand, and you now put it on your face, the laziness is gone. It's gone totally. Wallahi, that's a guarantee. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us purity. Allah says, water has the capacity to purify you from the devil. That is why a Muslim must be making wudu five times a day. Wash their faces, wash their hands, wash their feet to protect ourselves from the devil. Why do you think Allah says, Salah will protect you from evil and immorality, when evil and immorality is the first thing that shaitan calls towards. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. I was telling you that the devil tells you to do bad. And after that, he runs away. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Zukhruf. The example of the devil who tells man to disbelieve. Then when man disbelieves, then shaitan says, I am definitely free from you. I don't know anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shaitan says, look, it wasn't me, it was you. you the one who did it. And this is why on the day of Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Shaitan says, on the day of Qiyamah, he says, Inna Allah wa'adakum wa'ad al-haqqi wa wa'adtukum fa'akhlaftukum. Allah promised you a true promise. I just gave you a little promise. And so then you broke Allah's promise and you came to me. I had no control over you. So don't come to me. I can't avert the punishment from myself nor from yourself. Today it's your day. It was you to blame, not me. Look at how shaitan does to us. And sometimes people do that to us. They encourage us to do something and then they go away and they watch the fireworks. May Allah protect us. We don't want that to happen to us really. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us every form of protection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever follows the devil, I will fill Jahannam with them as well as the devil. I will fill Jahannam and hellfire with the devil and anyone who followed him. Allah is telling that to the devil. That you and all those who follow you, you deserve the same punishment because the two of you were cronies all in one basket. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the devil. Really, it is something serious. We need to look into our lives how the devil comes to us. Sometimes it's just a thought of pride or a thought that someone else is a bad person. That thought itself is already the first clutch of shaitan to us. No matter how much salah we are reading, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still protect us from the devil. In every single way and grant us inshallah every form of goodness wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallah bihamdihi subhanakallahumma bihamdik